All right, tonight you guys are going to take a look at Unit 2, Lesson A, Part 2. Our objective here is still to be able to solve a linear equation. These are going to come into play with some more multi-step um, equations. The first thing that we're going to take a look at here is our steps again. If you notice from Part 1 to Part 2, we do add this step of distributing. Quite a few of our examples that we work with here, we are going to distribute first. This is something that we always have to do first. Then we're going to combine our like terms. Then we're going to take the inverse operation to isolate our variable. Remember that important step of whatever you do to one side, you have to do to the other. So number four is extremely important. And then even with these problems, you should still be able to check each and every one of your solutions. So if we take a look at number one, example one, part A. What we have here is a problem where we're going to need to distribute. So in front of our parentheses here, we really have a negative one. So what we're going to do is we're going to distribute that to each term inside the parentheses. So I would have negative one y, and then a negative times a negative will be a positive four equals 20. We only distribute it to the left side of the equation because we don't have anything to distribute on the right side. So now we have our two-step equation that we looked at earlier today. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract 4 from both sides. So that cancels there. So I have negative 1y equals 16. I'm going to divide both sides by negative 1 because we want to isolate that y all by itself. So my answer here is going to be y equals negative 16. Once again, you guys can plug this back into your calculator and check to see if this is a solution. And if it's equal to 20, then your answer will check. All right, taking a look at part B. This one's a little bit different than, a, than the first setup. We have a 4 in front of our quantity, so we're going to distribute our 4 to each term inside. Our 9 is going to drop down. So I have plus a 4x, and then when I distribute to my second term, plus 4 equals 25. Now I'm going to see if I have any like terms. Well, I can combine my 9 and my 4. So I have 4x plus 13 equals 25. The next thing I'm going to do now, we still want to get that x all by itself, so I'm going to subtract 13 from both sides. So I have 4x equals 12. I'm going to divide both sides by 4, so those cancel. Divide the other side by 4. When I get x is equal to 3. Why don't you guys go ahead and pause the video here and check your solution in your calculator now. Okay, moving on to part C. This one looks a little bit different than the other ones. We do not have anything to distribute, but we do have some like terms to look at. So I have a C, and then a 2C, and then a negative 5C. Remember, we have the same variable, all raised to the same power, so we can combine these. The negative 5 is going to stay by itself. There's nothing to combine that with. So I have C plus 2C gives me 3c minus 5c is going to be a negative 2c equals 7. So now I want to get my c all by itself. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add 5 to both sides to get this to cancel out. So I have a negative 2c equals 12. Divide both sides by negative 2, so we'll cancel there. And I have C is equal to a negative 6. Once again, go ahead and pause the video now and check your solution. The next thing we're going to take a look at is another example. But the first thing we're going to do, since we have fractions in front here, what we're going to do instead of distributing to each term, we're going to start by clearing this fraction. So to clear this fraction, we're going to multiply by the reciprocal. We should have seen this vocab word in the last video. So remember, to multiply by the reciprocal, we're just going to flip the fraction. So they cancel there. 
Remember, whatever I do to the left side of the equation, I have to do to the right. So I'm going to multiply this side by 2 thirds. So I have 3x plus 5. Then I'm going to take 24 times 2, which is 48, and then divide it by 3, so that gives me 16. Next, we want to get x all by itself, so I'm going to subtract 5 from both sides. So our 5's cancel out, so I have 3x equals 11. Then I'm going to go and divide both sides by 3, so I have x is equal to 11 thirds. We can leave our problem in a fraction, so we can leave our answer in a fraction, and then we can go back and check this solution into our original equation where we see x. So go ahead, pause now, plug this into your calculator, and make sure that it's equal to 24. Looking at part B, we have that fraction again. So if we distribute to each term, we're going to end up having fractions in front of both of these. So what's the easier thing to do is, once again, multiply by our reciprocal. So we're just going to flip that fraction. So I'm going to multiply this side by 4 thirds and the other side by 4 thirds. So they cancel here. So now I can drop down z minus 6 equals 12 times 4 is 48 divided by 3 is 16. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add 6 to both sides. So I have z is equal to 22. Once again, go ahead and check that in your calculator and make sure that that solution checks and it's equal to 12. The U tries you guys are going to try in class tomorrow. So we're going to move on to our next set of examples where we're going to have equations with variables on both sides. So what we want to do is we want to bring all of our variables to one side and all of our constants to another. So <clears throat> in part A, if I split my equation down the middle, I'm first going to move my variables. So I'm going to subtract 4x from both sides. So they cancel here. So I have x plus 11 equals 18. I'm then going to subtract 11 from both sides, and I have x is equal to 7. Now, when I go to check this solution, I'm going to plug it back in wherever I see x. So I have 5 times 7 plus 11 equals 4 times 7 plus 18. So these two answers should be equal to each other for this to be the correct solution. Now, moving on to part B, it looks a little bit different because our first step here is going to be to distribute. So I'm going to take 2 times x and then 2 times 1. So on the right side first, I have 2x plus 2. On the left side, I have 5x minus 7. So same thing again. I want to move all my variables to one side, all of my constants to another. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to subtract 2x from both sides. So I have 3x minus 7 equals 2. Move down a little bit more here. So now I still want to get this x all by itself. So to continue with this problem, I'm going to add 7 to both sides. So I have 3x equals 9. I'm then going to go through and divide both sides by 3 so that I can get x by itself, and I have that x is equal to 3. So once again, if I go back through and plug in 3, in every place that I see x, each side of the equal sign should be equal to each other. All right, now our last one is kind of a combination of both. So what I notice here is I'm going to have to distribute on the left side and the right side. So let's distribute first. So this will be 12a plus 60. Then I'm going to have, on the other side, 5a plus 25. So if I split my equation down the middle again, 
Remember, I want to move all my variables to one side, all my constants to the other. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract 5a from both sides. So they cancel here. So I have 7a plus 60 equals 25. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract 60 from both sides. So I have 7a equals negative 35. Divide both sides by 7. And I have that a is equal to negative 5. You can go ahead and plug this back into your calculator and check your problem here. Make sure that the left side the equal sign is the same as the right. We're going to skip the U-tries for now and we're going to move on to our last example. The directions say to solve if possible. So I notice here that the first thing I'm going to have to do is distribute. So I have 4x minus 12 on the left side. On the other side I have negative 12 plus 4x. What do we notice about the equation at this point? We have the same thing on the left side and the right side. So if I continue to work through this, I'm going to take minus 4x minus 4x. So those cancel and those cancel. So I have negative 12 equals negative 12. Is this a true statement? Yes, it is. So now what this means is we have infinitely many solutions so that there are multiple options for the solutions for x that we can plug in to make this answer true. So these are kind of our special case problems. If we look at part b, I'm going to start by subtracting 3 from both sides. So I have w equals w plus 3. I'm going to subtract w from both sides. So I have 0 equals 3. Is this a true statement? No. So therefore, this example is no solution. What this means is there is no answer for x that will make this statement true. Once again, we're going to look at these u tries tomorrow in class. The last thing you guys are going to do is you're going to fill in, after watching this video, what can you now do? You've now seen two parts on solving linear equations. Make sure that if you still have questions that you answer this section. Alright, we'll see you tomorrow in class.